Hey, Taurus babies, it's EJ, which wrote a tarot. So we are keeping up with the series, Taurus and whoever, kissing in a tree. So this reading is for Taurus and Gemini. So Taurus, if you are paired up with the air sign of the twins, this reading is for you. This is going to be kind of January, February-ish. Uh, and the plan is to try and do this reading just for Taurus every month. Um, I'm probably not going to get into doing monthlies for every sign because it's... For those of you that don't know or don't know anybody with this kind of ability, when you start messing with energy and spirits and shit, it can drain you. Um, I know there are quite a few readers on YouTube. They don't do personal readings, and I read one yesterday <clears throat> about why. And the guy just says it, it takes an emotional drain, and, and it does. Um, so if there are days that you come on here and you're looking for me and you don't see me, it means I'm probably either at work or sleeping. Because to do this, I have to kind of be energetically up. And I have to kind of be energetically clear so I can hear what spirit is saying. And if, you, if you're doing personal readings for somebody, uh, which I do, I probably do two in life, real, real life readings a week. Um, and they usually drain me because even though I'm dealing with a variety of zodiac signs, when you start dealing with people individually and their personal issues and problems or situations um if you have this ability depending on what level you have this ability you can dig deep um i've had people that i've read for walk away crying i've had other people <sighs> laughing you know because it, you're getting into people's emotional shit so on top of my emotional shit i also dragging around somebody else's emotional shit and then i'm an empath so i pick up on all the shit anyway so um it gets hard when you're trying to do readings for every sign. You're doing monthlies, live monthlies. You got people on YouTube that are doing daily readings. And I think about it, if I wasn't working full time, I would probably be doing that. But yeah, so I'm doing this just for Taurus. Um, in the last video, Taurus and Taurus, if at some point I said Taurus and Virgo, I was thinking Virgo, but I wasn't reading for Virgo, and if you saw the spread, if you heard the reading, you know, that was all Taurus all damn day long. So, now we're doing Taurus and Gemini, and we're going to see what we got up, and I have yabbled on for 2 minutes and 57 seconds, so let me shut up, let me cut the cards, yep, go like that, so this is a 9 card spread, Plus one for overall energy and three for guidance from the universe. A reminder that I do my cards straight up. I don't do reversals. So let's get started, Taurus and Gemini. Let's see what we got in the recent past energy. The Hermit. Princess of Wands. Four of Cups. And Taurus, overall energy for your Taurus-Gemini relationship. Whoa, Nine of Wands. I'll be damned. Yeah, Taurus, I feel you. I hear you. So it looks like coming, the energy you bring bringing with you from the end of last year, you've kind of been in contemplation mode, the hermit card. You're not lost. You ain't confused by shit. You've just been trying to just keep it on the DL and just keep to yourself and think about what's been going on in your relationship. The Princess of Wands is telling me that you are getting a bit of wanderlust, Taurus. I know how that is because you some, something is going on with your Gemini. This ain't got to it yet. But you are kind of looking out the map, looking out the window. I wonder what's on the other side of that. So whatever has got you contemplating and it's got you uh, kind of putting your adventurer's hat on, looking out the window, it's also made you very guarded. I don't know what the fuck is going on, Taurus and Gemini, but okay. Your overall energy, the Nine of Wands, the Brain on Fire card. Um, but this is coming back to me as you or your Gemini being inflexible. Um, I'm going to say it's probably the air sign that's being inflexible at this point. There's something 
going on in the relationship and the air sign this is a fire card wants to fire but you know fire needs air and the air sign is probably driving you literally insane with some bullshit so let's see where we are this is your overall energy towards um don't let somebody else's inflexibility dictate to you what you need to be doing. So if they're, if your Gemini is telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't go here, you can't go there, and they're off wandering around the damn green planet and shit, don't let your brain catch on fire. Just don't. If they're being inflexible, you being like this is going to cause you not necessarily your relationship, but it's going to cause you a setback. And you, Taurus, you don't need no setbacks right now. You need to keep plugging right ahead. Let's see what we got going on for our current energy. And our Gemini relationship. Two of Swords. More air energy. Three of Wands. Fire energy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the Star card. So where you are currently, Taurus, with your Gemini you're trying to leave whatever issues you got going on in the past. And I think your Gemini is probably trying to do the same thing. Swords are air energy. And it looks like both of you in, in separate ways are trying to leave whatever was going on in the past. But both of you are in your heads about some shit. And both of you are being emotional. I know Geminis have a tendency to... Let me back that up. Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, the three air signs, they have a tendency to get cold, distant, and just shut down on you. But don't get this twisted. Just because they're on the front, got this facade going on, see all the waters and rocks and shit back there, that's emotional. And so your Gemini might not be telling you that they're on an emotional roller coaster, but they are, and surely you are, because if you've got this plan up in a reading, um, Leave, leave issues in the past and get the hell up out your head with the bullshit because um, you're not going to find anything here being like this but a bunch of misery. You get up in your head and you start creating scenarios and trying to figure this out and figure that out. There's just, again, that nine of wine energy up in your head, brain on fire to the two of swords just looking at Everything from the past, everything that's gone on. Don't get here. Don't stay here. If you are here, don't stay here. With the Three of Wands, we're going to just kind of back up on the same thing. In the Simply Deep Tarot deck, the Three of Wands also has a meaning of spinning your wheels. So in this partnership with your Gemini, at some point you feel like you're spinning your wheels. Now, understand, all these fucking wands, and see the... My favorite reader on here, I'm not going to call him out, but my favorite reader will tell you people lie, cards don't. So if you could see this, your overall energy, nine of wands. Your middle card in your recent past, princess of wands. Your middle card in the current energy is three of wands. So you're hot about this shit. Whatever went on, and the and, and universe is telling me something went on. It's just not telling me exactly what I ain't got there yet. But you are fired up about it, and I think you're fired up enough towards where you are ready to just about walk away because the star card, that's Major Arcana. Hermit card, Major Arcana. Those are the two on the table right now. If you've been contemplating... If you came out of last year, into this year, contemplating, you will contemplate without thinking about your hopes, wishes, and dreams. So, Taurus, you are wishing for something or someone better. Again, and it is, I'm going to turn this just here. I'm not going to move the phone because I got it super glued up here on the thing. But just know you got wine energy, and this is right down the center. So this is you inside. This is you. You fired up. I know Taurus, since y'all get fired up on some shit and you start thinking about some shit, next thing you know, you're trying to manifest some new shit. Let's see what we got going on for future energy for Taurus and Gemini. 
Princess of Cups, Two of Cups, and the Cherry Up. So with the Princess of Cups, Taurus, you may want to just start getting some emotional distance on this relationship. Your Gemini certainly has. And if you look there, the girl has a bowl of fish. And she's looking down at the fish. She's not mad at the fish or nothing. But she's not emotionally connected to those fish. She's got some emotional distance between her, the fish, with the bowl, the whole thing. So I'm going to say your Gemini has probably naturally, because air signs can do this very well. Earth signs, not so much. Fire signs, not so much. Water signs can kind of do this well, too. They can put that emotional distance on some shit. You will be sitting in the middle of the street on fire, talking about what the fuck, and your air sign or your fire sign has just, doo -doo 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 -doo. what happened? So, I'm going to tell you as well, Taurus, if your Gemini is putting some emotional distance on some shit, put some water on the burning brain, and put some emotional distance on this shit so you can begin to see your relationship as it is. I don't necessarily see a break here, but I do see a rebuilding. So with that said, your next card is the Two of Cups. This is about commitment and being in a mutually supportive, committed relationship. If you want this, you're going to have to work for this. Um... But <clears throat> it's a chariot car. In this deck, it's about decisions that you make that change your destiny, okay? I'm going to put it real simply. This is about you getting in the who ride and getting the hell up out. This is a thought that's crossing your mind. If we look down the last aisle... Last card for the recent past is the Four of Coins, which in this instance is about you being guarded, you're being emotionally guarded in particular. But it's got you hoping, wishing, and dreaming on some new shit. The fuck, next thing you know, you in the who ride and you are gone. Bye. So, looking at this, you've got wine energy, which means there's passion here. Now, for Taurus, passion usually means bull in a china shop type passion but i don't feel like this is you building up passion for your partner this is you building up passion because you're pissed off um i'm gonna pull three more cards because i'm kind of just curious to know universe what is going on with the taurus gemini relationship what is triggering or what is a catalyst to cause all this angst with the taurus in this relationship. Give me three cards, universe. I'm asking for three cards. Oh, hell no. Okay. So, this is clarifying this very clearly for me. Six of Wands. You thought when you got into this relationship with this Gemini, it was all going to be glory and victory and yeah, and no, it wasn't. And that, that, this card in this deck is about accepting recognition, moving up, um, feeling accomplished, none of which you're feeling in this relationship. Um, you are very much trying to get up off them rocky ass cups onto firmer ground. Um, there's a, I think it's the Eight of Swords, I'm not sure which one it is, but one of the Swords cards, it's about moving out of choppy waters into calmer seas. Similar similar from a cup perspective um and when you're dealing with cups you're talking about possessions and shit that you have so Taurus you you are underneath all of this trying to move off this rocky shit onto some firmer ground so you have a better understanding the thing with dealing with an air sign is there's no ground in them I take it for what it's worth Taurus you're dealing with air signs. It's just what the fuck they are. Air helps things. Air helps fire burn. Air helps plants and shit grow. Obviously, it helps us because we breathe oxygen. But air is not a put it on the table kind of thing. It's just air is just out there. So, for us, 
that can have us feeling like we are standing on some fucking cups. And our little hooves don't always like that. So we are really trying to get back on solid ground where we belong over here. This last card is telling me some thought patterns towards five of swords, more intellectual energy from your current energy, the two of swords. What do we say? We don't want to get up in our heads like this. It's going to cause some problems. Yeah, this is the only other sword card up here. So, while how we're thinking and feeling about some shit is playing into it, how we are positively or negatively thinking about some shit is going to determine what the outcome of this situation is going to be. I am very uncomfortable sitting here doing this reading towards that that's letting me know you are very uncomfortable in this relationship now and with all this water and fire and shaky shit i get it let's see what the universe has for advice and guidance for you towards in your gemini pairing queen of cups ace of cups oh lord Huh. And the King of Cups. So check this out. You need to continue being the kind, generous, caring soul that you are, Taurus. Regardless of whatever's going on in this situation. If you change that up, and you let the fucked up thinking, your overall energy, change who you are, you're going to set yourself back. You don't want to do that. Queen of Cups is in this deck about being understanding, sweet, caring. There's some manipulation there. You can see girlfriend, she's thinking about some shit. But it's nothing devious. And then let's just look at the color of the car. It's a greenish blue. So it's kind of subtle, but not subtle. So just know you need to continue being the caring, generous soul that you are naturally. Um, if you feel like you are putting up something or trying to front on something, then you are not, that, that's not where you're trying to be with this energy right here. You are trying to show your partner, Gemini, that you are still cool, calm, collected, friendly, caring, compassionate. Ace of Cups. Universe is telling you, Taurus, you can stay in this shit or you can get out. However you want to work this. It's not unconditional love with your Gemini. Now, in a, this deck, this card is about unconditional love, beginning of a journey. I'm going to say if I read reversals, this one probably would have turned upside down. Um, I'm just not feeling no unconditional love. I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling like this is the beginning of anything. If anything, I feel like it's the end of something. It may be the end of the relationship. It may be the end of a toxic cycle in the relationship. Or it may just be a restart, a reboot. You cut the thing off and you cut it back on and let it boot itself back up. This is going to be up to you, Taurus. There's a lot of green here, but there's not enough green here for me to say you're going to stay in this relationship. Especially with the three cards that I just pulled extra. I'm not seeing that you're trying to be in this relationship if you're not going to see any of the benefit. And again, if you get stuck in that thinking, <laughs> you're going to be in the who ride and be right out the door. And it's up to you. If you want to leave, if you feel like, and I said this in the last couple of readings, if you feel like the relationship, if you've been in it five years and you feel like, okay, fuck it. This is some fucked up shit, but I'm going to work on it. Stay. Stay. You got the peace thing right here. You got the dove with your heart. You got your cup. If you think you can reboot it and make it happen, do it. If you don't, my feeling is you don't. The king of cups, <laughs> if you stay here and you don't work out the toxicity of the relationship, you, Taurus, not the Gemini, you are going to be in your cup looking all sad, depressed, and some other shit and trigger some emotional stuff you don't want to trigger. 
You won't be sitting at the party over in the corner by yourself with your glass full looking crazy. You don't want to do that. So, my biggest thing for you, Taurus, is to not let this consume you. Don't let your thinking about the situation consume you. Fire can consume you. And have your brain fucking on fire. Find some water. Let me put it real. If you got some fucking water sign friends, a Pisces, a Cancer, or Scorpio, sometimes it helps to get around signs that do just what they say they are. So I have friends that are fire signs. Sometimes they need my earthly tourist down to earth, earth sign shit to help them. Sometimes I need their fire consume my brain type shit to help me. Sometimes I need air. I need an air sign to come in and just blow some shit out. You're dealing with an air sign with a Gemini. So you may need to find your Pisces friend or your Cancer friend or your Scorpio friend and have them motherfuckers put the fire out for you mentally. Talk to them. See what advice they have for you. If you have another air sign friend outside of your relationship with your Gemini, get with them. Talk to them. If they're of the opposite sex, however this is resonating, male or female, talk to them. They might be able to give you some insight on what's going on with your Gemini. I can't say there's third party energy here. I think this is really about the differences in the sign, uh, where Tauruses, we tend to deal with things head on. Air signs tend to deal with things kind of in a roundabout, abstract way. If you can make this work, Taurus, it's not going to be the end of the world. It will probably be better than your worst relationship, obviously. But I'm just not getting the sense that you're trying to put this effort into this relationship. So for whatever it's worth, always stand in your truth, talk your truth, be your truth. Um, Find them water friends so they can help you put this fire out in your brain. And if you need to get in a new ride and roll out, roll out. Taurus, I'm going to leave this reading here. I hope you and your Gemini get it together. Do the best you can. If not, move on. Don't be angry. Don't be mad. I hope y'all have a good weekend and a good end to the month. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, y'all.